here we have a nice two and a half pound beef chuck roast and over here we have some prepared vegetables we have potatoes carrots celery normally I like to use a little boiler onions they didn't have any at the store so I quartered up some nice uh, Maui onions and of course I have some mushrooms there in the back if you use full cap uh, champignons and just cut off the stem a little bit and select ones that the gill caps are closed they'll take uh, the uh, pressure cooking quite well everything's ready to go in the pot okay I have the pressure cooker on the stove I'm going to take out the spacer put it on a little bit of medium high heat to start heating I'm adding a little bit of olive oil to the bottom okay over here I have our two and a half pound uh, beef chuck roast I'm going to salt it and pepper and we'll turn over and salt and pepper the other side and then this is going into the pan to get browned on both sides side oh yeah looking good we'll brown the other side now we're not cooking the meat here we're just browning it to help develop some of those flavors we'll give this about a minute or two um, brown that side okay the other side is browned nicely so we're going to take our spacer and this will keep the meat off the very bottom of the pot and we'll put that in place I have a uh, 14 and a half ounce cup of beef broth. I've added enough water to make it up to two cups. This will go in. And that fills it right to the bottom of the spacer. The meat isn't actually sitting in the liquid, just above it. Now what I'm going to add is a package of dry recipe soup mix. I'll just sprinkle that on top and all around. Then I'm adding one can of condensed cream of mushroom soup. Just kind of put that on top. No water added, just the soup. Okay. Now we're going to take and put the inspect our lid. Make sure that your gasket is good, your vent holes and everything are open, and your safety lock works. Okay, you uh, put your lid on, snap it closed, and now we'll wait for steam to come from our vent. Okay, we have a good amount of steam coming out of the vent hole. We're going to put our rocker on top. Our little safety interlock has popped up and the lid is now locked in place. We're waiting for the rocker to start jiggling, then we'll reduce the heat just to maintain the jiggle. Okay, the rocker has started to jiggle. We're going to turn it down. There's a little coast on the electric stove, but we're going to play with the heat here over the next couple minutes just to get it to a slow rhythmic jiggle. Okay, and now we're going to set our timer. For that size piece of meat, we're going to go about 20 minutes. And start. And this is what we're aiming for. Uh, we adjust our, our temperature, our heat, so that we get a nice, slow, gentle, rhythmic rocking. Okay, our time is up. Turn off the heat. We're going to take our pressure cooker and carefully move it over here to the sink. 
This is cold quenching uh, that's allowed on this make and model of pressure cooker. What you need to do is read the instructions on yours to find out the best way to quick quench or quick vent your cooker. Uh, as long as you follow the instructions, pressure cookers are very safe to use. If you don't follow the instructions, you're in new territory and you're on your own. And we'll just run water over the top until the safety interlock has dropped, which it has, which shows the pressure is down. Lift off the top. And we'll go ahead and open our pressure cooker. And we'll just bring it over here onto the pan. Uh, we'll use a couple forks to get this out of here. That's real tender. Put that on a plate. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is take a little foil and cover that while I'm cooking the vegetables. First thing I do is check the water level inside. The water level is right up to the edge of the, uh, so we didn't really lose much water. I, after I get the vegetables in, I will be adding one more cup of water though. Here's all our vegetables ready to go in. Right here on the pressure cooker, there's a little line. It shows how your full level. Uh, we haven't gone over the full level. We're right at the top of where we can go. So it's very important that you observe that. Do not fill over this line. I'm going to add one more cup of water. Put our lid back on. And we'll return the cooker to the stove. We'll turn on medium-high heat again. And as soon as steam comes out of the top, then we'll go ahead and put our rocker back on. Okay, the meat's rested for a while. And while we're waiting for our vegetables to come up to heat, we're going to hit and slice the, the meat. So tender it almost doesn't need cutting, but go ahead and cut it into nice serving pieces here. The moist cooking has broken down the collagen, made the meat nice and tender. Just taking a put these over on the serving tray here. And we'll 
cover that with some foil to help keep it warm while we're waiting for the vegetables. Okay, we have a nice steady stream of steam coming out. You want a lot of steam to come out because you want it to push all the air out and just have water vapor inside instead of air so it cooks more evenly and quicker. We have a good head of steam coming out. Carefully we'll put our little rocker on top and we can see that we have some steam coming out of our interlock and in just a moment the interlock will lock and the lid will be locked in place. It popped up, the lid has popped up in place. So we're not Okay, we have a rocker starting to move, so we're going to turn down the heat and we're going to set the timer for four minutes. Okay, our time is up. Temperature off, clock off. We take our fresh cooker, carefully bring it over here to the sink. And we will quick quench like we did before. And I repeat, make sure you read your book about the proper method of quick quenching or quick uh, depressurizing for your particular unit. Electric units are definitely different than this one is and some of these you cannot do this. So make sure you check your operating instructions really carefully. Safety interlock is dropped away. And the lid opens. And there's all our goodies inside. Okay, we're going to bring it over here onto the sink. And we'll go ahead and we'll start bringing these vegetables onto the serving tray with the meat. Handle them gently because even though they're only in the four minutes of pressure cooking, they are very tender. Okay, all the vegetables are transferred to the serving plate. I'm just going to take out the little spacer at the bottom. And this pot goes back onto the stove. Bring it up to about medium heat here. What I have here is a tablespoon of flour and water, a little slurry. I'm going to add that to the mixture. Help thicken it up a little bit, make a nice sauce. I'm also going to add a little bit of kitchen bouquet. This is optional. I just like it. It makes a pretty nice gravy, about a couple teaspoons worth. And I'll go ahead and we'll just stir this, bring it to a a simmer, a little bubble here. Thicken it up a little bit and it'll be ready to serve. You can cut. It's thickened up very nicely. We have a nice uh, light gravy here to go on. So I'll turn that off. Give that a second to cool down. And we'll set the pot over here on the Lord. And here we go. Here's our serving tray. Pot roast and vegetables. And the gravy is about to go in the bowl.